This video has been funded through an educational grant from Biocon Biologics Limited. Biocon Biologics Limited has no input towards the content of the interview or the video. The American Academy of Ophthalmology, or AAO, annual meeting, held in Chicago on the 18th to the 21st of October, welcomed over 15,000 physicians, professionals, and guests. The program included subspecialty days. Retina 2024 had 20 sections featuring a wide range of retinal diseases and treatments, including age-related macular degeneration, or AMD, and diabetic macular edema, or DME. Dr. Sunir Garg spoke with us following the conference to discuss his presentation of data from the Photon study. So this year I was fortunate to present the ILEA HD, or the Aflibercept 8 milligram data, looking at the Photon study. Photon was a study looking at patients with diabetic macular edema, and this was a large study with two years data at this point. And patients who enrolled in the study were both treatment naive, meaning they never had treatment before, but about 44% of the patients were previously treated with some medication. And we wanted to know whether treatment naive patients and previously treated patients responded equally well to a flibercept 8 milligrams. This was a post hoc analysis looking at the study data. And what we found is based on demographics, the two groups were really quite balanced with each other. So that was very good to see. We noticed that patients who had previously treated DME had less overall diabetic retinopathy which is sort of interesting, but as you may recall from earlier work, one of the magic things that happens with anti-VEGF treatment in the eye is it tends to cause a regression in diabetic retinopathy severity score. So that may have been part of the reason that there was a difference there as well. And we looked at patients who were receiving ILEA 2 milligrams, ILEA 8 milligrams every 12 weeks, and ILEA 8 milligrams every 16 weeks. Just for some background, the Photon study had three different arms. The first arm was using our standard aflibercept 2 milligram product that was dosed every month for five months, and then every eight weeks thereafter as per the label. With aflibercept 8 milligrams, there were two separate arms. Both arms received ILEA 8 milligrams every month. Then after that, patients were extended. One group was extended out to 12 weeks. Another group was extended out to 16 weeks. And patients were followed for certain criteria, specifically if they had worsening of visual acuity, as well as worsening on the OCT, their dosing interval was shortened. If they met those criteria early on in the extension, they were kept at eight weeks for the duration of year one. If they were doing well until they got to the second part of year one, they were shortened by a month. And that was kind of the basic study design. There's nuances that I won't go into greater detail with on this particular presentation, but we follow those patients out to a year. And what we found was some interesting things. Overall, patients with previously treated DME as well as treatment naive responded beautifully to both a flibercept 2 milligram as well as a flibercept 8 milligram. In particular, patients who were in the 8 milligram group assigned every 12 week dosing had results that were virtually identical to the 2 milligram group dosed every 8 weeks. What that means is we can keep patients seeing well, maintain their anatomy, and make their lives easier by dosing them less frequently with a flibercept 8 milligram. But when we looked at the patients who were assigned every 16 weeks, although they responded well to the drug and had improvement in the visual acuity, the previously treated eyes didn't have the same improvement as patients who were treated with 8 milligram every 12 weeks. What that means is if I'm seeing a patient who was treated previously with DME and I put them on a flibercept 8 milligram, they may do better with slightly more frequent treatment than every 16 weeks. And, you know, on one hand, that seems a little odd, but if I think about the patients that I enrolled in the study, and I was a principal investigator at our location, the patients who were most interested in being enrolled in the study were patients who were doing okay with their previous treatment, but weren't doing great. If they're doing great, they were happy just to stick with the program. But if they weren't doing great, they kept on asking, you know, doc, is there something else that we can do that might get me better vision? or may enable me to get dosed less frequently. So those are the patients that got enrolled in the study. So there's probably a selection bias a priori, even though they were randomized once they were in the study. How do the different treatment schedules affect patients? We know that in the original anti-VEGF studies, patients were on fixed dosing, meaning every four weeks or every eight weeks for the duration of the study, whether it's two years or longer. 
And that does tend to lead to really good visual acuity outcomes, but it also tends to lead to patient burnout. And in the clinical research programs, you know, you can ask the patients to do this, particularly when we had laser as an alternative, it was really appealing for people. And we're in their clinical research program, you know, they get a VIP pass to the front of the line. There's no copay. There's no parking expense. A lot of times there'll be a driver provided for them. So we remove all the financial barriers and sort of make the experience easier for patients. But once they're in clinical care, to have the patients come back every month or two with really no end in sight becomes a significant burden for a lot of them. So one of the things that retina specialists started to do a number of years ago is a different treatment model called PRN, which is an as-needed approach, meaning patients would come in every month, would get scanned, would get their vision checked, would get an examination, and if they had disease activity, they would get treated at that point. We have a lot of data suggesting that gets good vision outcomes, reduces a little the number of needle pokes, but doesn't reduce how often patients have to come into the office. And for most patients, the burden really isn't from the injection, it's from the office visit itself. So not a lot of retina specialists in the U.S. do that approach. Then there's a third approach, which is a treat and extend approach, which is I'll treat you every month or so in the beginning until I get you as good as I think I can get you. And then we try to maintain that improvement and bring you in less frequently. So traditionally, we would bring patients in, let's say, at a month, and then once their anatomy was optimal and their vision was as good as I can get them, maybe bring them in at five weeks or six weeks. If they looked good at that visit, give them a treatment, bring them back in seven or eight weeks, kind of so on and so forth. And different retina specialists would have a maximum extension. When you look at what we did with the Pulsar and Photon studies, it was a similar concept to treat and extend. Patients were treated initially until their anatomy hopefully optimized. Then they started getting extended out. But rather than taking small steps like a week or two, patients were extended quite aggressively out to 12 weeks, then 16 weeks, then 20 weeks. And although the study ended at month 24, Patients were assigned to actually come in 24 months later, so potentially six months later. Hopefully with the extension study, I'll have different data to share with you in the future. But that really does seem to enable us to maintain patients' visual acuity and continue to reduce their treatment burden. And for our patients with diabetic edema, it's really a game changer for them. From a delivery standpoint, one of the interesting things about a flibrocept 8 milligrams is even though it's four times the dose of the 2 milligrams, the volume is only somewhat larger. So our traditional aflibercept 2 milligram dose is 50 microliters. The 8 milligram dose is 70 microliters. And so from a patient perspective, it's really well tolerated and they don't really appreciate the difference. The safety data that we have right now also shows there basically is equivalence between the 8 milligrams and 2 milligram dose. So patients are always very happy to know that. The other thing that I'll mention to patients, particularly when I'm transitioning them from the 2 milligram aflibercept to the 8 milligram dose, is this the exact same drug that they've been on? It's just more of it. And for some patients who are a little bit leery about trying new things, you know, knowing that it's the exact same drug that they've had a great experience with so far, and that the safety data that we have is virtually identical to what we saw before, has really made that transition or that switch really easy for patients. 